Hi, everybody. It's been a while. Two, three months, I think, since I recorded uh, my last video tutorial. And for this series of video tutorials, we are going to jump ahead a little bit in the uh, arc of videos that I've been building because I have been experimenting with the uh, freeform tools here in 3ds Max, which allow you to retopologize a high poly mesh. Now, if you're watching this and you're saying, I have no idea what a high poly mesh is, let me show you. If I hit F4 on my keyboard here, you'll see that this model that we're looking at right here is very dense. In fact, if I hit 7 on my keyboard, you can see that this little guy is made up, if you look right here, of about 524,182 polygons. That's a lot of polygons. And even with my system uh, maxed out in terms of RAM, it still has trouble. Uh, it's doing okay with this one, but with the really high poly cages that I bring into 3ds Max out of ZBrush, it struggles. So this guy isn't too bad, but obviously we can't bring this into a game engine. We need to retopologize this guy. So in this series, we're going to talk about how you can do that inside of 3ds Max. Let me hide that wireframe from you again. Now, um, if you are one of my students at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, um, you've most likely been shown retopology using ZBrush. And ZBrush has some, some nice uh, topology tools, but they're a little bit clunky, uh, and some folks don't take to them right away just because the ZBrush interface is a little alien. So this is just an alternative that I wanted to share. So first thing you got to do is load in your high poly mesh, okay? And if I go ahead and select this little guy, you'll see, there we go. From the name, you can tell it's a uh, likeness, or at least I hope it's a likeness, of the actor Adrian Brody. Still sort of a work in progress in ZBrush, but I uh, decimated it and exported a, a lower poly version into Mac so I could use it as an example. So let's say that I want to retopologize this guy. What I'm going to do is come up here to my uh, freeform panel, which is right here. Now, in order to see these graphite tools up here and see your freeform tools, you've got to come right over here to this little show full ribbon button. Click that guy. Now, right off the bat, you're not going to see anything. And that's because I need to be on the modify panel. So if I come over here, I click on the modify panel. Oh, look, my freeform tools show up. Now, if you're looking at the graphite modeling tools first, and we'll talk about some of these later on in the series too. If you're looking at these initially, come up here and click on Freeform. All right, now, right here where it says Surface, initially for you guys, when you first come in here, it's going to say Grid, okay? And if you hover over any one of these tools, it'll tell you exactly what the tool does, and it will also encourage you to hit F1 which will take you to the online help file and tell you specifically about the topic that you're hovering over. Super useful if you don't want to have to just rely on video tutorials. So, okay, step one. Instead of drawing on the grid, I actually want to be able to draw polygons onto my model. So I'm going to come up here to this little down arrow beside this option, and I'm going to choose Draw on Surface. And then once that's done, ordinarily what I would have to do is come down here and select my model. I've already done that, but just to show you how that's done, I'm going to click down here. Now you'll see the word pick on here, but I'm going to come out here and actually click on my mesh. And you want to make sure that the name of your object appears right here. Okay. Now the next thing to do is jump down here into this polydraw menu, which folds up kind of Swiss Army knife style. And in the next video, what we're going to do because these only run for five minutes. I'm using Jing. What we're going to talk about in the next video is how to set up these tools so that you can actually come in here and draw right on the surface of the model. 